Picking a good stocks, especially for long term, is not rocket science. As long as you are ready to learn and also follow basic instructions and principles. Now, there are two major ways to analyze stocks. Number one is what we call the quantitative analysis. The second one is qualitative analysis. And I've done this uh, in a separate video. So you can check the investment playlist. You are going to find it there. How to pick a good stocks qualitative analysis. So now we want to deal with we want to deal with quantitative analysis. Majorly, when we talk about this analysis, we are talking about picking stocks for the long term. If you want to pick stocks for short term, it means you have to do what we call technical analysis. That has to do with you going to the charts, checking where the where the prices where the price has been, where it is right now on the chart. You need to know how to read basic knowledge of candlesticks and also basic indicators like the RSI, like the, like the MACD, like the EMA, exponential moving average and the, and the rest. So let's talk about quantitative analysis where you just need to know basic metrics. And this metrics is not something you have to calculate yourself. There are platforms where they have already been calculated. You will only have to apply filters in order to screen the stocks that meet your criteria. If you are saying, for instance, your net profit margin, you want something that will be greater than 20%, it will bring it up based on the criteria you set. Now, we have Financial Times. Financial Times can do that. It's a trading view. It's also a very good tool to do this. Maybe in another video, I can do a comprehensive video. On it. But for now, let me just talk about the basic quantitative metrics that you need to know when it comes to quantitative analysis. Now, this is also called fundamental analysis, I hope you understand. Fundamental analysis is only a combination of the company's financials and also what is happening in the economy. Now, profitability metrics, you need to know for profitability metrics. This tells you how profitable the company is, how, how profitable the company is. So you look at the net profit margin, net profit margin, you look at the gross profit margin, you look at the what we call the return on equity, return on equity, then you look at return on assets. When we say net profit margin, that is, we call it the bottom line, the bottom line, which means how out of the revenue they make, how much, what percentage could, were they able to turn to net profits? What percentage were they able to turn to their profit? So you see some analysts they will say that anything above ten percent is okay for them, depending on the economy. If you are doing U.S. stocks, your percentage should be different. If you are doing Nigerian stocks, your percentage should be different because you need to look at the terrain. You need to look at the economy. I hope you understand. And you also need to look at the country. For instance, there are some countries where the tax is high. There are some countries where the tax is low. So you can't compare the profit margin in one terrain with another one. So you need to know what your terrain, what the terrain, what the economy of that country is saying. So for some people, we say anything above 10%. Some will say anything above 20%. Is okay for them. While for gross profit margin, anything above this particular percentage, maybe above fifty percent, above fifty percent, for some people is okay. Return on asset as well. Anything above fifteen percent, twenty percent is okay. Likewise, return on assets. Anything above fifteen percent. Now, after you have done that, which is profitability, and you are satisfied, then you move to what we call valuation metric. Don't forget, I said it is majorly for long term. You look at valuation metrics, you look at the PE ratio, the price or earning ratio. How much are you paying per share of the company? How much, how much are you earning per share of the company? So you look at the PE ratio. Now, some people will, say, will tell you that the closer to one, it's, the closer to one, the better. But it may also show that there are many things you need to consider. You don't just take it in isolation. I hope you understand. I hope you will get this. So don't just look at the closer to one, the better it is. At times, it, it may not be so. When you go and check Amazon, go and check Amazon. Maybe you looked at the P-E ratio of Amazon uh, for, let's say, 15 years ago. By now, I'm sure that P-E ratio would have misled you. So that's why you don't just look at P-E ratio in isolation. You need to look at it as regards that industry. What is the industry peer? What are the company? What are what is it that the industry is saying, the industry as a whole, what is the average in that industry? I hope you understand because it differs from one industry to the other. You can't compare tech industry with communication industry. You can't compare consumer goods industry 
to industrial. You can't con you can't compare oil and gas to palm oil sector. I hope you understand. So understand this that this ratio is industry specific. It is it's not something you can generalize. Get that for banking, for instance, you don't even use P ratio for banking. I so I did not know. It was later I got to know that you don't use P ratio for bank for banks, for instance, for bank for the banking industry. Now the next one is the PB ratio, which we call the price to book ratio, where you look at the book value and you compare it to the price. Then we have the next one, which is the price to sales ratio, PS ratio, where you look at the price to sales ratio. When we say price, it means the market price. That's the meaning. Then the last but not the least is dividend yield, especially if you are a deep, you are looking for dividend paying stocks. You need to pay attention, zoom your attention to dividend yield, and if possible, also look at the dividend growth over time. Look at the dividend growth. Look at the dividend history. This will tell you if this company will be able to pay dividend into the foreseeable future. For instance, in the US stocks, we have companies that have been paying dividend consistently for over 20, 30 years. And people are comfortable buying such stocks because they know that this company has delivered over the years. So that is valuation metrics. Then the last but not the least is what we call the growth metrics. Growth metrics. So number one, you need to look at the EPS growth. So when we say EPS growth, it simply means any earnings per share growth. The growth of the earnings per share. So it is usually stated at the at the end of every income statement. You will see it. You will see the growth. Even you, you can see the percentage growth in it. Now, aside from that, just like I said, there are platforms. There are platforms like Trading View, Financial Times, Market Screener that can give you this data, and you just need to use a filter. There's also Investing Pro if you are doing US stock. There's P Webu if you are doing US stock. But for Nigerian stock, you can use Trade. You can use Financial Times or Trading View. Then you look at revenue growth. How has the revenue been year in, year out? This one is even easy because every time there is any report, you will see it's newspapers. This is what they usually report any growth. But any growth is not enough. What any growth majorly tells us is that there is demand for the product of that company. It's not as if their revenue is declining. If their revenue is declining, it shows that there is a problem. It shows that maybe the company is already going into extinction. Is it that the company is going into extinction? Or maybe the industry in which it is is already going towards a dead end. I hope you understand. Maybe it's already at the maturity stage and it's now about to, to decline. Law of diminishing return is now catching up without industry. So that is for revenue growth. Then the last, the third one, which is the PEG ratio. Now, you don't just look at the PE ratio. You need to come, you need to look at it as regards the growth as well. So you don't need to look at the PEG ratio, which is the price of earnings growth ratio. I hope you understand. Then the last but not the least is what we call the free cash flow growth. How has their free cash flow how has it grown over time? Is it declining or is growing? This is very important. Free cash flow. Don't just look at all this. Please look at the FCF. Where you look at the cash from operating activities and you just majorly. There are many parameters that people use, but for me, I, I, I prefer using cash flow from operating activity. Then I just deduct the capital expenditure. For me, that's the metric, that's the metric I use. So Thank you so much for staying to the end. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do by clicking on the sub subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we release a new video. So we'll meet in our next video. Stay blessed.